Are you guys, I'm gonna design my first pair of socks. I'm nervous. So the story behind these socks is that I have been knitting them for years. I've knit myself probably five pairs. I've gifted five pairs and then I have sold, I think somebody ordered 10 locally that they bought and so I made them and sold them to her. But I have not yet made the pattern and for some reason I'm really nervous because I've never actually written a sock pattern for other humans to read and understand. Now, I don't know why, I know this pattern by heart and I know they work, I know they fit, but I just seem to have this imposter syndrome like who am I to design socks? Like I just have this fear like it's not good enough and so I was kind of like you guys have been waiting so patiently. I've talked about these socks on the podcast, on Instagram, and you guys have been waiting so patiently. I wanna kind of pull back the curtain and let you guys see how I even design, how I even make them. In this video, I'll walk you through how I make these socks. You can also follow along or grab the pattern below in the description. And I hope this shows you kind of what goes into designing a pattern a little bit and gets you excited to cast on yours. To make this exact pair of socks, you have everything you need in this video. I am a woman's size eight and a half, although I'm pregnant, so some days it feels a lot bigger. <laughs> so I'm gonna make myself a pair of cabin socks for around the house, and I'm gonna use the Knit Picks Wool the Andes in worsted weight. I do have the bear, but I already made a pair of bear to show you. I actually made it with my hand dyed avocado yarn. So these are the socks that I'm gonna make. They are cabin socks, worsted weight, and uh, like I said, this first pair is just hand dyed with avocado. But with you guys, I'm actually gonna cast on my Wool of the Andes tweed. It's called Picket Fence Heather. And I'm just gonna use two skeins. I know it, it will use less than that. And I'm using a size seven, US seven circular needle to cast on and so I'm really excited, I'm nervous though. So this pattern has three of my favorite things going for it in that it has really easy to remember repeats uh, and it's up very fast and I don't have to use tiny needles because I think I'm most comfortable with size sevens. <laughs> okay, so just to walk you through the real quick construction of how I'm gonna do this is starting cuff down. You can watch this and convert it to a toe up pattern. I knit cuff down and so like I said, I'm just gonna make a pair of socks, show you how I make them for me, and then you can tailor them to fit however they're gonna work for you. So I'm gonna go cuff down, and then you go straight into the cables, and it's cabled all around. And then I'm gonna do the slip stitch heel, gusset, and then you're gonna work the foot. And then uh, we'll decrease, and we'll do the Kitchener stitch at the end. So let's do it. Let's just, let's just do it. <laughs> So for a visual, I started with about 220 yards, and this is how much I have left of the first pair I made. All right, so I have my seven circular needles, my two skeins of yarn I'm choosing. I'm so excited about this color. Oh my gosh, this is a new one I have not done yet. I'm obsessed with this yarn. I know there's no nylon in it for socks, and that's a big sock no-no for some people, but I actually like all wool socks. So. This is kind of my go-to for socks. Anyway, so for starters, I'm gonna do the long tail cast on and I'm gonna cast on 36 stitches. Okay, I'm gonna place my marker and then we're just going to make sure we're not twisted here. And we're gonna go into the cuff, which is just a one by one ribbing. So you're gonna knit one purl one all the way around. And we're just going to continue that for 14 rows. Okay, so I have knit my 14 rows of my cuff and I decided I'm going to add my 
little cinnamon roll progress keeper because why not? It adds a little excitement for me and makes me want to go make some cinnamon rolls. So what I'm going to do now um, is finish this row all the way. I don't want my stitch marker to fall off. So, all right, so I'm going to do my first row that's not the ribbing and that's just going to be my setup row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purl one, knit four, Purl one, knit one, purl one. And so that's kind of going to be the pattern. The repeat that I'm going to do across is going to be purl one, knit one, purl one, knit four. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit four. So if I just finished purl, knit, purl, I'm going to go knit four. And I'm going to do something with those those four knit stitches in the next round. So now I'm going to do my purl knit purl, and then knit my four. Okay, so for this very last repeat, I am going to knit four. And then I'm gonna purl. And then knit two together. I'm gonna knit these last two together so that it's a seamless, um, I guess continuation once you take the stitch marker out that way it's the four pearls that I just or the four, four knits that I just did and then pearl knit pearl going into the next knit so I'm gonna slip my marker and then we're gonna come up to my the first cabling row so stitch one get out of there stitch one is just gonna be the pearl and now we are at the four knit stitches. So I'm gonna grab my cable needle. I'm just using a double pointed needle. That's also size seven. And I'm going to hold two stitches in back and I'm gonna knit two stitches. From the left needle and then knit the two stitches off of this cable needle. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around on this cable row. So do my cables and then purl, knit, purl. And then we're gonna cable these. And then I'm just going to do that around and I will meet you back at the, at the beginning of the round. Okay, so I have done the cable all the way around. And now for the next uh, six rounds, I'm going to just knit the knits and purl the purls. And then every seventh row, so every seventh row, I'm going to cable again. So you can make this sock 
as long or as short as you want. I typically continue for five cables. So I'll count the, the cable rows and see the crossovers and I'll count when I have five. That's when I'm gonna start pulling for my heel. So I will go through this and I'll meet you guys at the heel because I'll show you how I break up to find the instep and then also find the heel, so. So I finished the leg of my sock. After the cuff, I followed the cable pattern all the way until I have five cable crosses. And how I count those cable crosses is not the flat part of the cable, but I actually count each time it bunches. So for example, this is my first cross, so I'll say one, two, three, four, and then up here, five. And that's just personal preference, however high up you want the sock to go. So then after I did my very last fifth cable, I did, I went through one more time knitting where it's a knit and purling where it's a purl, um, just following the pattern for one more row. Okay, so I've done my entire leg. I did my five cables. And so this is where my beginning of round was. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to continue my pattern for five stitches, and then I'm going to actually move my beginning of round. Okay, so my beginning of round is no longer here. I'm gonna flip over and I'm going to follow the pattern, knit the knits and purl the purls across these 17 stitches. This is gonna be the instep and I'm not gonna to touch this while I work on my slip stitch heel over there. So just going across these 17 stitches next. Okay, these are my instep. I'm gonna leave those alone and I'm gonna be working on these back 18 stitches and this is going to be the heel. So the important thing to remember when doing the slip stitch heel is that when you're slipping your stitches purl-wise, your yarn's gonna be in back. So my first stitch here is going to be slipping as if I'm gonna purl and this yarn is still behind me and then I'm gonna knit the next stitch and I'm gonna do that all the way across. And if you typically do a different heel, then you can do the heel just like you normally would do. Um, so then I'm gonna slip, knit, slip, knit, all the way across. And when I get to the end of these stitches, I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm at the end of that side of the heel. I'm gonna flip back over. Again, ignoring this needle completely. Now what I'm gonna do, looking at the purl side, I'm going to slip my first stitch as if I'm purling, and then I'm gonna purl across the rest of the needle. Okay, back over to this side. So I'm going to slip as if I'm purling again with my yarn in the back. And then I'm gonna come to the next one and knit. And then slip and knit across. And then flip it back around. We're on the purling side. So we're gonna slip the first one to purl and then purl across all the way.
Okay, so now if we look at it, I've done four rows completely total, but when you look at it from this side, if you see this is the last purl I did from doing the pattern, and then now into the heel, you can see kind of this V here. I'll use my needle. You have one V here and one V here. So even though I've done four rows, it's showing these two kind of pop out. So I've got, I've done one and two, and I'm gonna continue this until I've done seven. And then I will meet you guys back here. Okay, I'm back. I've got my 14 total rows and you should see seven slip stitches that kind of pop, at, pop out at you. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so I'm ending on a right side row. So I'm going to start my heel turn, which if I'm being honest, is not my favorite part. <laughs> So what I do is I'm going to slip this first stitch as if I'm purling again with my yarn and back, and then I'm gonna knit nine. Oops. So I'll have a total of 10 stitches on the needle, but I slipped this first one. So knit nine, and then you're going to slip, slip, knit, and then knit one. And what I did is I created a little gap, which will be a little bit easier to see on the other side. So after I knit one, I'm going to leave these stitches on this needle, flip back over, and slip this first stitch like I'm gonna purl, and knit, or sorry, purl three. So one, two, three. And then purl two together. Oops, I think I lost part of my yarn. <laughs> purl two together. And then purl one. Then I'm leaving these back on here. I'm gonna flip back over, slip as if I'm gonna purl, and then I'm going to knit until I'm one away from the gap. So if you look here, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a gap here. So I'm gonna knit all the way up to here till I have one stitch before the gap. Okay, so I've got one stitch, gap, and then here. So I'm going to do slip, slip, knit again. And then knit one. And I'm leaving these stitches, flipping back over. And really what I'm gonna do is just repeat this until all of these stitches are worked and there are no more gaps. So you're always gonna go until one before the um, the gap, and so I'm gonna do that on the purl side also. I'm purling, sorry, I slipped the first stitch and now I'm purling to one before the gap. So on this side, here's my gap, and on purls, you're gonna purl two together, and then purl one. Flip back over, slip, as if I'm gonna purl, knit to that gap. And I'm at the gap, so I'm gonna do slip, slip, knit, knit one. 
and turn. Slip as if I'm purling, purl across to the gap, and then I'm gonna do the purl two together over that gap again. Now, the only reason I don't like doing this so much is because it's not as mindless and it's not something that I like to do while the kids are awake because it's easy to lose your spot if you're not paying attention. And then it's harder, at least for me, it's harder than to pick it up and remember where I was and what stitches I had worked. And it's just, it's so much easier. It's kind of like Kitchener Stitch for me where it's just so much easier to get it all done at once, get through the heel and move on to the foot. Happier times ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna slip, slip and knit. And now I've worked all the stitches on this side, but if you look, I still have my gap over here. So I'm gonna flip back over, get some more yarn and finish up my purls so I have all the stitches worked. Oops. <laughs> okay, last two, purl two together. And I'm there. So now what I'm going to do, I have 10 stitches on this back needle. I'm going to knit five. I'm going to put my beginning of round marker again, and I'm going to knit five. And then, well, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick up some stitches, but first we're going to knit five. Five, I'm gonna scoop that up and go five more. There we go. Okay, we got a little heel poking out here. So what I'm gonna do is turn this sideways and I'm going to pick up eight stitches down the side. So what I'm looking for when I turn it sideways are these little sideways V's. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. And then some people choose to pick up the leg. I actually am because it is a chunkier yarn. So from in between the stitches here and the stitches here, there's a horizontal line. I'm actually just gonna pick up from front to back, and then I'm gonna knit through the back. Oops. So if I can get it, knit through the back row and pick up an extra one, and that will close that gap up a little bit. So I now have two, four, six, eight, and I'm gonna place my marker here. Okay, so I picked up my eight. I'm gonna slip on a new marker, get some more yarn, and then I'm gonna just follow in the pattern across my instep those 17 stitches that we left just hanging out. I'm gonna pick those up following, if it's a purl, I'm gonna purl it. If it's a knit, I'm going to knit it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna be picking up seven stitches, but first I'm gonna do that one, um, 
the horizontal little line in the gap. So I picked up those eight stitches. I'm gonna pick up the five that I had divided from the heel. If you remember, we knit the five, placed the marker, and then knit five more before picking up. So I'm gonna finish those five right here. And I am at my beginning of the row. So what I'm gonna do is switch over to my circulars and um, then show you just real fast how we start decreasing a little bit because we've got a lot of stitches on and it's gonna feel kind of funny on your feet. It's gonna feel way too big. So we need to decrease the stitches now and then continue the leg. Okay. So I'm gonna stick a different colored marker here, even though for me it's pretty obvious I have my heel, it just helps sometimes to remember that the different colored marker is the beginning of round and not the, the sides over here. So the decrease rows is again a repeat of two different rows. So we're gonna knit all the way down to the third, to the last three stitches. Okay, last three stitches. I'm going to decrease by knitting two together. And then knitting one. And I'm gonna slip my stitch and just knit in the pattern. So I've got a purl, knit, purl. And I'm not on a cable row, so I'm just gonna knit. slipping my marker. I'm going to knit one and then slip, slip, knit two together and then knit all the way back to the round, the beginning of the round. All right, we made it back around and back to a decrease row. So we're gonna do another decrease row. You're going to knit all the way down until the last three, knit two together, follow the pattern, and then on this side over here, we're gonna knit one, slip, slip, knit two together, and then knit all the way up. And then you're just gonna continue um, alternating between a decrease row and a knit row until not in between these blue stitch markers, nothing's gonna change there. You're just cabling and following the pattern. But in between the blues and the yellow stitch markers, you're going to continue decreasing until there's nine on, on each side. So nine stitches left here and nine stitches left over here. And then once you have nine on each side, you're back to 35 stitches because you had 17 for the instep and then 99 is 18, so you'll have 35 stitches, and then you're just gonna continue knitting this for the length that you need it to be for your foot. So for me, I'm going to knit until six inches, which is going to be about 11 cables total, all the way from the cuff to the toe, and then that's where we're gonna do the decreasing for the toe. So. Next is a decrease row and then a knit row, decrease row, knit row until you have nine stitches. And then you're just gonna continue in this cable pattern that we were doing. And um, then we'll hop into the toe. Okay, I've done my foot and I've gone for six inches, which with this gauge worked out to be from start to finish 11 cables. So my last row that I just ended was a cable, and now I'm going to start decreasing for the toe. So I start by doing maybe one or two rows on the circular needles before I have to switch over to double pointed needles because I'm going to be decreasing the amount of stitches that are on my needles and it's just gonna, it's not gonna be easy to pull once I have just a few stitches, so. So between 
my beginning of round and my first marker here before the cable starts, I'm going to knit all the way across until the last three stitches. I'm going to knit two together and then knit one. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm doing a knit two together and then knit one. I'm going to slip my marker and then for the first stitch I'm going to knit and then I'm going to do a slip slip knit. So I'm going to slip one stitch as if I'm knitting slip the second stitch as if I'm knitting, and then with the left needle, I'm gonna insert into both of those and knit them together. And then I'm not following the cable pattern anymore. I'm going to knit all the way across to the last three stitches. Okay, last three stitches, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to knit two together, knit one, and then slip my marker. And then for the last little section before my back to the beginning of the round, I'm gonna do the knit one, slip, slip, knit. So I'm gonna knit one, slip, slip, and then knit, oops. And then knit all the way back to my beginning of round. And then the next row or the next round I'm going to do, I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to do any decreases for the next round. I'm actually going to just knit all the way around. And then I'm going to continue doing those two repeats. So one round of decreasing, one round of just knitting, and then one round of decreasing, and then just knitting. Okay, we made it through. We made it through. And so, I decreased until I have eight stitches on this needle, four stitches and four stitches. So what I'm gonna do is knit across these last four stitches. And then I'm going to Cut my yarn so that we can do the Kitchener stitch, which is honestly just a whole thing for me. I always have to pay attention to what I'm doing with that. So what I'm going to do for the Kitchener stitch is grab my yarn needle. So kind of the first thing we do is our setup stitches. So on this front needle, we're going to purl. We're going to leave the stitch on there. And then on the back, we're going to knit. I can get it in there and leave the stitch on there and now we are ready to start so we're going to knit this first stitch on the front needle and take it off and then purl the next stitch on the front needle but leave it on and then in the back we're going to purl that stitch and take it off and then we're going to knit the back stitch but leave it on so we kind of switch back and forth so over here we're going to knit off purl on purl off and knit on and then knit off, purl, oops, let the cut off all the way, purl on, purl off, and knit on. And then we're gonna knit off, purl, on, purl, off, and knit on, knit off, purl on, purl off, 
and knit on. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. We're so close. Okay, knit off, purl on. It's getting all twisted. Pearl off, knit on, and knit off, pearl off, and we have joined. Okay, okay, I'm so excited. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just weave in some ends. And um, I'm really excited. I'm excited to put these on and I'm excited for you guys to see what they look like. And if you were knitting along, I'm excited to see how yours turned out or hear about it. So if you knit along, then let me know in the comments any places you get stuck or just let me know how it goes because I want to celebrate with you because these are my favorite socks and they're just so darn comfortable and cute.